Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining the St. Augustine Wild Reserve in its very first virtual fundraiser. I'm Deborah Warwick, the founder of the St. Augustine Wild Reserve. Please enjoy this hour-long video that will be running on YouTube throughout the day. In this video, you will meet many of the reserve's exotic animals and hear tales from the zookeepers who spend their days and evenings caring for our precious animals. Check out our virtual silent auction. Go to our website at sawildreserve.org, click on the donate link, and that will take you to our virtual fundraiser. From there, you can see items up for auction and you will be given the opportunity to bid. We appreciate all of your donations and support over the years. We couldn't run the reserve without you. Thank you. Enjoy the video and the silent auction. Hi, my name is Karen and I've been a volunteer here at the reserve for 16 years. Let me give you a little um, background on where our animals come from. They'll come from various sources. They often come from seizures uh, by Florida Fish and Wildlife. They'll seize animals that the people with them don't have the proper license or they're not being properly cared for. And once that happens, they need to have a forever home, and Deborah will be contacted to see if she has space for them. We also have some former pets, where people will get a cute little fuzzy tiger, a puppy wolf, and when they're six weeks old, they're a lot of fun. By the time they're six months old, they're eating your couch, pooping on your most expensive rug, and costing a fortune in vet and food bills, and it's not so much fun so they will need a forever home. We usually get our animals in between four and five months old. Another way of getting animals is breeders overstock. They'll breed an animal hoping to make money off of it um, by posing it for pictures or letting it interact with the public for a large fee. By the time, again, they're four to five months old, depending on the animal, they need to be placed in a forever home. Now, we go through a lot of food here at the reserve. We will go th through more than a thousand pounds of meat a week. We also use um, bird seed, bird food, uh, fruits and vegetables for the smaller animals. So we go through a whole lot of food during the week and it can get very expensive. We also have vet bills. They need routine care, um, shots and um, Deborah, if someone needs more than that, she needs to transport that animal to a vet and pay for that care. So that's what we do here. And I'm going to uh, let you go on now with your virtual tour. All the hardworking volunteers out here at the reserve are gonna take you around and introduce you to all our furry friends. So enjoy your tour and parting words, donate often and a lot. And we'll see you on a future fundraiser. This is Venus. Venus is one of our 
uh, Siberian Bengal Tiger mixes. She's got a lot more Siberian in her. She's uh, quite large for a female. Are you going to give us a chuff? <laughs> that is a chuff, and that is basically a happy tiger greeting. Uh, tigers do not have the ability to purr. Um, the mechanism uh, to purr is different with these guys than it is in smaller cats. So the big cats cannot purr, but they can roar. Uh, the reason for that is uh, it's a difference in the hyoid bone in small cats. <laughs> can I get another one? <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> in small cats, that hyoid bone is more rigid and they vibrate it, which allows them to make that purring sound. But in the big cats, it's actually the hyoid bone is more elastic, which uh, gives them the ability to roar, but they cannot purr. So they're pretty much mutually exclusive. Roaring cats cannot purr and purring cats cannot roar. <laughs> and I have all kinds of good smells on me right now. Um, but again, this large girl is Venus. Um, she uh, came with her brother, Apollo, to us after uh, the cub petting industry. Um, so they were used, uh, uh, basically, this, <laughs> this other behavior we're doing. Um, the smells on my hand, she's basically identifying. This is actually, it's called the Fleming response. Uh, we call it stinky face, because it looks like she just smelled something gross and is uh, making a nasty face towards it. But what she's actually doing is she's identifying that smell <laughs> with her Jacobson's organ. Um, so tigers have uh, Jacobson's organ on the roof of their mouth and they will, you're gonna pee on me. <laughs> they have a Jacobson's organ on the roof of their mouth and what she's doing is she's rolling her lips back in order to better identify those smells. The lemon response is her better identifying what she just smelled on my hands. Um, right now, she is getting into the tub uh, and not wanting to get her front paws wet. Um, as you see, she's got them propped up just like that. A lot of our um, big cats will do that. Uh, they don't like getting their front feet wet. And you can see her pretty claws there. If you can see her paw, I don't know if you're getting it. Um, on the, the other, those pretty claws, there they are. Um, so we do not declaw or anything, our guys here. They come fully equipped and they still have those. Um, so gorgeous claws on her. Um, but uh, she is enjoying her tub right now, just uh, cooling off. It's a warm day, so I don't blame you, girly. This handsome guy is Venus's brother. He's a big dude. He's probably the second largest tiger we have on the property. Again, uh, bigger probably because they've got more Siberian in them. Uh, Siberian tigers are the largest natural cat uh, that exists in the world. Um, Ligers are not natural. They occur only in captivity, so they don't count, but they would be bigger than Siberian tigers. Uh, but because he's got that Siberian in him, he is a very big guy, uh, second only to Seize on this property. Um, so, but uh, he's you can, doing some vocalizations too. This one over here is Venus. This is Apollo, brother, sister, right next to each other so they can still interact. Uh, came to us basically from a facility that uh, used to use them for cub petting. Um, so people will pay big bucks to play with these guys, interact with them whenever they're small, but then whenever they get too big, uh, the public can legally no longer interact with them. Um, so if a facility isn't going to use them for any more breeding or any kind of training of any kind, then they'll usually, if it's a reputable place, will find them another home. So that is why they came to us. Uh, another facility asked us if we would take them when, we were, when they were cubs, and we said absolutely we will. Um, so we got them at about five months of age and, uh, you know, raised them here. This girl still comes out for walks. Uh, this guy does not. Um, he uh, made it clear that that wasn't going to be, you know, continue to be a safe thing to do. He uh, really liked it out here and, you know, kind of started protesting going back in. Um, so, but, um, so we don't handle him anymore, but he's still a very, very good boy, sweet boy. Uh, this girl's a lot of fun, still very well behaved on the leash. Um, so we do still take her out. Um, these guys, uh, like I said before, about um, are Bengal Siberian mixes. Uh, they're four years old now. Um, so they are larger though, which is why we know they've got a lot of that uh, Siberian in them. Um, because she's a big girl, he's a big guy. So, <laughs> Venus and Apollo. Hi, my name is Samantha Cianciola, and I'm a volunteer here at the Wild Reserve. I'm here with Sloka, an Asian spotted leopard. And in this enclosure as well, we also have Eclipse. She's also an Asian spotted leopard, but with the gene for melanism. So this simply means that her fur appears in the dark or black color phase. She does have spots similar to Sloka here. They're just a lot more difficult to see because of that dark coloration. Now, Sloka came to us after he was a failure in the entertainment industry. They found that he would get really distracted and have a hard time staying on his marks. And so that's when our owner, Deborah, decided to take him in here to this facility so he could live out his retirement in peace. Eclipse, on the other hand, was a former pet. And the woman that had her found that she was getting up there in age and she was having a hard time continuing the care for this particular feisty leopard. 
Now the two of them do share this entire enclosure. Hi there, sweetheart. Hi, sweetie. Uh, but they are not a breeding pair as they are both in their early teen years. So they would not have a good time uh, successfully reproducing. Now, leopards tend to bond with one or a few people. Sloka, we have found, seems to love everyone. And we can contribute that to the fact that he's been handled a lot in the past. He's had a lot of human interaction and socialization working on those movies. Where Eclipse tends to follow that more leopard-like trait. She has bonded with a few of us here at the reserve and I am lucky enough to be one of them. So in my past three years volunteering here, we've developed a really close bond and she does actually solicit pets from me now. I can easily hand feed her and I give her and Sloka both a lot of enrichment such as boxes, uh, pumpkins, catnip, lavender oil, and all kinds of different things just for them to have fun. We're very happy to have both of these leopards and we're gonna do everything that we can to make sure that they remain happy and healthy throughout the rest of their lives here at this reserve. So this is Gita. Gita is a two-year-old leucistic tiger. Leucism just is that white color that you see. Um, she's a two-year-old Bengal tiger. Um, this is actually about as big as she's going to get. She's a pretty petite girl. She's actually the smallest tiger on the reserve here. Um, you see we're obviously leash walking her. She's uh, very well behaved on a leash. This is just an extra form of enrichment um, that we give to our animals um, who are well behaved enough uh, to do this and safe enough to do it. Um, so getting different smells here is basically what she's doing. Uh, some of our other tigers, Rupa and Shiva, were just out on a walk and she smelled them. So different type of scent enrichment there. Um, so she looks to us for guidance as we walk her around and uh, it's just a good time for her to be able to come out, get some uh, extra exercise, enrichment, some extra affection, um, and with all of her entire posse of volunteers here. <laughs> My name's Whitney. Thank you for watching our virtual tour of the St. Augustine Wild Reserve. I'm here with Indigo um, and her sister Raven is behind in the enclosure behind us. They're two female British Columbian wolves. Um, they just turned three. Um, British Columbian is a subspecies of gray wolf. Go. Um, an interesting fact about these beautiful girls is they have webbing between their toes, which makes them great swimmers. She's eating cheese right now. It's one of her favorite treats. They also have thermoregulated paws, um, which is another cool fact. Um, it helps keep their paws from freezing in cold temperatures. There you go, mama. They're very beautiful. They have sleek, um, wonderful coats very majestic. Um, so yes, this is Indigo and Raven um, behind us. And thank you so much for supporting us and it's donations from supporters like you that help us um, be able to maintain and make things happen out here. Thank you so much. My name is Josh and today I'm going to be introducing you to Jasmine. She is our 17 year old cougar. Cougars are also known as mountain lions or pumas. They're, they have a bunch of different names. Uh, Jazzy is about 17 years old right now. We got her when she was six months old. Now, cougars actually have a extremely physically strong body. They can jump anywhere from 25 feet forwards to 16 feet up in the air or jump from the top of a rock ledge or a tree and fall 60 feet to the floor and be perfectly fine like nothing happened. Now I'm gonna take you over here to meet Jazzy. Now Jazzy is a sweet girl. She is very vocal and she likes to purr a lot and obviously make her rare noise. Likes her water ice cold and she has a nice ice fan right over here for her to have. Jazzy's quite picky with her food as well. She only prefers chicken and pork. She doesn't love red meat too much. On behalf of everyone that volunteers out here at St. Augustine Wildlife Reserve, I'd like to say thank you for tuning in. Say bye, Jasmine. This is Sitara, she's a golden tabby tiger, a very rare color variation of tiger. She's a Bengal-Siberian mix, but mostly Siberian because she's huge. So tigers in the wild might live to be 10. In human care, they can go beyond that to 20. Sitara is one of our hamburger, very sweet big girls. 
likes to chop, likes a lot of attention, but hates other tigers. We had to put shade cloth between her and the other tigers, and she's very jealous of the tiger that lives across the way. Sitara has a lot of tangerine color and light white color due to having two wide band chromosomes. It's very unusual, and her fur feels a little bit softer than a regular tiger, and a little bit less wiry. Tigers are very aquatic cats. They like to get in the water. They like to pee and poo in the water. So if any animal's tracking them, it can't track them because it'll go downstream and they get away from flies and they hunt. <laughs> and a happy tiger makes a sound called a chuff. <laughs> they can't purr because they don't have the bone structure in their throat to purr, but they do roar. Oh, we're done. Hi, my name is Tammy. I'm a volunteer here at the St. Augustine Wild Reserve with my friend Spirit here. You can see her gorgeous white coloring. She's what we call an Arctic wolf, giving her a little treat of teeth to keep her kind of in place. Uh, an Arctic wolf is basically a subspecies of the gray wolf. They're long and lankier. They need this white coloring because they live in the very high Nordic areas, way up in the Canada, Alaska, and it helps them blend to their environment. But Spirit here has the perfect name. She's three years old and her mate is our alpha male who is very bossy. And this girl has a little devilish in her as well, right girl? Uh, because she can keep up with him very well. So they are matched up based on their temperament by our owner, Deborah Warwick. And uh, she is an extremely sweet girl. Uh, wolves are uh, very loyal animals. Um, they, they make their own wolf pack. They determine who's gonna be alpha, beta, and omega. Alphas are the rulers and the king of that uh, domain. And everyone else falls into line and they all know their role. I just want to thank you all for your support uh, because we could not feed and care and do all the medical stuff we need to do with these animals without your support. So thank you very much. My name is Lindsay and I am here with our two new fawns, Prancer and Dancer. Uh, they are about three and a half months old and they came to us actually from a rehabilitation center that rescued them from the wild. Uh, they are not siblings, they are about a week apart in age, however they were each abandoned by their mother and uh, were helpless and defenseless in the wild. So the rehabilitation center actually uh, rescued them and they've been with us for about two weeks now. Now since coming here, we've been bottle feeding them at least twice a day with a special formula. We've been bringing them their favorite, thank you, uh, favorite foods such as spring mix, uh, an assortment of berries, apples, nuts for protein. And we've set them up in this nice big enclosure um, this is a temporary enclosure though, just while they're growing up. When they become full grown, we will move them to a larger enclosure or we have the option to um, basically have them in their enclosure during the day and then at night, let them out so that they can roam the compound and get lots of room to roam and explore. Um, so we are extremely happy and excited to have Prancer and Dancer here with us. Hey guys, my name's Natalie. Um, this is Sayuri. We received Sayuri <laughs> in um, 2015. Um, now we actually got her from Florida Fish and Wildlife because she was seized from um, from an owner that didn't have the right permits, did they? No, they didn't. So they didn't know how to take care of you properly. Um, so that's when we received her. And as you can see that she likes to hang out with us, but she also likes to in interact with her environment a lot. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and see her just kind of hang out and interact and have some fun with the different toys we have set up. I hope you enjoy it. And we just wanted to say thank you. Hi again, this is Tammy uh, with another set of our wolves. This is Wachiwi. She is a British Columbian wolf and she's very submissive. She will have her tail tucked uh, and be the lesser of the aggressive ones. This guy is the king of this place. His name is Merlin, also known as I call him Moose because he is over a hundred pounds. He wants to lick my face, <laughs> but he thinks he's a Yorkie. So what he wants to do is sit on our laps, roll on our laps, 
and just basically snuggle the whole day away. Now you notice they're trying to lick my face. That is natural for a wolf. Uh, that's their language because that's the way they greet the, the, each other. It's a calming mechanism. It's a communication mechanism. And it's uh, the way they do. All right, let's get some love. But Merlin here came to us about four months old. So we didn't have him from just a pup, but he has uh, come in really well and is still learning his manners even at three years old. As you can see, sometimes he gets uh, a little a little rowdy, but uh, all he really wants us is just to love on him because uh, he has the absolute sweetest disposition. She bows down to him. She's lesser, she's more of an omega. He is more in the beta range in their hierarchy. So uh, again, I wanna thank you all for your support because we couldn't take care of him and do what we do without you all. So thank you so much. Hi, I'm uh, Brian here at St. Augustine Wild Reserve and this is my buddy Nairobi. Nairobi is an African lion. Um, he's a male. Um, he is seven years old and actually uh, Nairobi was the runt of his litter uh, when he was born and he was a real scaredy cat. Um, so he liked to be hand fed and he was raised in Miss Deb's house uh, for most of the time. Um, so Nairobi um, <clears throat> is a, uh, like I said, an African mountain lion and uh, he came from uh, a breeder, uh, breeder overstock in uh, surplus in Michigan. And uh, a few facts about lions. Lions are uh, found in Africa on the African savanna and they live in social, um, let me see if we can get them to come up for a cage hug. Or We'll come up for a cage hunt. And they live in social structures called prides. And uh, most of the females actually do the hunting and uh, some of the prides consist of a few male lions and uh, some of the females that consist of for the hunting. And uh, if you take a look under his eyes there, you might see um, these white linings under his eyes. And this um, white lines under his eyes actually help reflect um, the sun. It's very hot on the African savanna where they're from. And lions are actually more um, nocturnal so they do more of their hunting at night and they're pretty lazy through the day but that those uh, white linings under their eyes will help reflect the glare in the sun, um, the sun when they're doing their hunting. Hi I'm Samantha Cianciola I'm here with Kathy Wally and this is Kadiri. He is our one and only African serval and he's actually a rather elderly boy. He's about 20 years old so he would likely not have made it this long in the wild due to poaching, habitat loss, diseases and such but here in captivity, we can keep them into their early 20s. So we found that in his older age, he's doing really, really well. Uh, he's still very, very healthy. And he also has developed quite a bond with Kathy here. You can see she's giving him some nice treats and she's able to actually pet him, which not all of us are able to do. But it's really nice that we can have a, an animal and a volunteer create a bond like this because the love is really important. Now, African servals are really unique little cats. They are very strong for their size. They can jump 10 feet up straight into the air and knock a couple of birds down and have themselves a nice meal. They're also the only cats that have both spots and stripes, which you can see he has the stripes on his neck area here, and he has the spots on the backside. Now, this is a pretty typical attitude. He's got a little bit more bark than bite. Uh, he's just letting Kathy know he wants some more of those treats. <laughs> but this is our Kadiri. We're very happy to have him. We're going to let him live out his retirement here. He was a previous movie star cat, uh, but he's going to live out a, a life of luxury until the day he decides to pass. Hi, my name is Margaret. Thank you so much for supporting the St. Augustine Wild Reserve. This is Malishka. Malishka is a Siberian lynx, the largest cat in the bobcat family, which includes Canadian lynxes and bobcats and Iberian lynxes, which are very rare. Siberian lynxes are found in Northern Europe, Northern Russia, and Northern Asia. They like to hunt by getting in a tree and waiting for a deer or ungulate to walk underneath them and then they pounce. A Siberian lynx can take down a deer that weighs three to four times their weight. The scientists believe that ear tufts help them listen for rabbits in the snow. My name's Jim, this is my partner, Lindsay. We've been lucky enough to raise these two beautiful tigers. They're a little over two years old now. And as you'll see in a little bit, they love enrichment. They love their bubble baths. They love playing with their 
balls, they love boxes with perfume on them, and we just got back from a walk around the compound, and you can see they're pretty worn out about now. <laughs> Lindsay and I have been primary caretakers for Rupa and Shiva since they arrived at the St. Augustine Wild Reserve. They were about five uh, months of age and about 40 pounds when they arrived. A tiger makes a chuffing sound when it's happy, and Rupa and Shiva have been sh chuffing constantly uh, since they arrived at our sanctuary. Together, Lindsay and I fed them bottles twice a day, every day, along with chicken leg quarters. Rupa and Shiva both prefer to have us hold the leg quarters while they ate rather than eating out of a bowl. We complied then and continue to spoil them now. Also within the first week of their arrival we began to teach them to walk on a leash. Today Rupa and Shiva are about two years old and weigh roughly 400 pounds. They both still enjoy going on a leash walk at least once a week. Leash walks are only one form of enrichment Rupa and Shiva receive. They also enjoy boxes, palm fronds, pumpkins, watermelons, and perfumes. One of their favorite things to do is play with a large ball in their bubble bath. For a really special treat, we take them to a vacant enclosure that has access to a pond. They play in the water for hours and mostly just sleep the next day or two. Rupa and Shiva are very sweet and get along great, but have very different personalities. Shiva tends to be more adventurous when introduced to something new like a large box. Once she plays with it for a while and deems it safe, then Rupa will join in the fun. Rupa enjoys food a lot and will always eat before she does anything else. The stripe pattern on tigers is unique to each animal, much like fingerprints are to humans. Shiva has two unique markings. First, she has a small stripe on her front left arm. More unique, however, is a perfect three at the base of her tail. I hope you enjoyed learning about our beautiful tigers, Rupa and Shiva. Hi, I'm Kathy. I'd like to introduce you to our two African spotted hyenas. Juba and Sakani. This is Sakani, the female, and this is Juba, our male. You'll notice that Sakani's a little bigger. Juba, come. Juba, come. Sakani is bigger um, because that's the way it is in the hyena species. The females are larger and more dominant. They live in clans in Africa, and the female, the alpha female, is the leader of the clan. You can see Juba is just the sweetest little boy ever. He would love to have me rub on him all day if I could, but his favorite thing is to get his teeth brushed. Come here, Jubes. Let's brush the teeth. It's a good boy. Oh, you like that, huh? They are considered scavengers. Um, but like any animal on the African plain, if they come across a carcass, they're going to take advantage of a free meal. These two are, have extremely different personalities. Juba is the sweet little boy, and he loves almost everybody, and he loves having his teeth brushed. Sakani, on the other hand, is dominant and will push him out of the way to get him away from me. Thank you, Sakani. You want your teeth brushed? No? No, Juba does. Yeah, that's a good boy. Yeah, that's a good boy. Does that feel good? They're extremely intelligent animals. They're excellent at problem solving. They've been included in studies and they're very, very bright. They've learned some commands, but they don't want to pay attention to any of them this morning. That's a good boy. Hi kids. Yeah. Say hello. They make 22 different vocalizations. The whoop is one of them. The laugh is another one, but the laugh is more of an anxiety reaction than it is an actual laugh. So we don't have them do that here. They do um, something called a moo or a moan. Something that sounds like a rattle. Karen and 
I am here with Chakra, an 11-year-old uh, Bengal Siberian mix. Hey, Chakra. She's gotten the bottle since uh, the day we got her, and she still enjoys it as much as I enjoy giving it to her. Now, the white Bengal tiger has not been seen in the wild since about 1951. It is a, um, she's a mix. She's a Bengal Siberian mix, but the Bengal is the only tiger known to carry that white gene. So when you see a white tiger, it's Bengal or partially Bengal. Chakra is a really fascinating girl. She can be a real challenge for um, some staffers. She has a bag of tricks that she likes to pull out. One of her favorite is she'll get in her tub here with the bubble bath, wait for someone to get close and explode out soaking them in water and bubbles. I think she, uh, she's laughing when she does that. She um, also will, uh, given the chance on a leash, will climb a tree, unusual for a tiger. But I, we call her our beautiful baby girl and we just um, enjoy hanging out with her and giving her her ball ball and playing with her. So Chakra, 11 year old Bengal Siberian mix. A beautiful baby girl. Chakra. This beautiful cat is Natasha. Natasha is an old Siberian lynx. She's 17 years old. In the wild, a big cat may get 10 years, and if they do, they're pretty lucky. Natasha likes having her tail roots scratched. Most lynxes do, as a lot of the other big cats do. Natasha had a sad start in life. She was sold by a breeder to an unlicensed woman who thought she would be a good pet for her three children. She was shipped via airline in a crate after being declawed, which involves cutting off the first knuckle of the cat. It's a very cruel thing to do. When she arrived, she came out of her shipping crate and tried to attack the woman. The woman was very afraid, smartly, and she shooed Natasha into the garage and then she did a bad thing, which was absolutely nothing except feed her and give her water. So Natasha lived in a dark garage. It was an air conditioned garage, but it was dark. And she had a lot of food and water and no socialization, no sun, no wind, no grass, no outdoors. And that situation went on for more than a year. Eventually someone, we don't know who, called Fish and Wildlife and said, I think there's a wild animal living in my neighbor's garage and they seized Natasha. Natasha was brought to the St. Augustine Wild Reserve 15, 14 years ago. She's been here ever since. It took her about five or six years to trust human beings not to hurt her, and now she does. She is a little bit overweight. She has a little bit of arthritis, but mostly she's a happy, content little old lady or a big old lady. Female lynxes are not supposed to be more than 40 or 50 pounds. I'm gonna estimate Natasha's more like 80 or 90 pounds. But we have taken some weight off her since she got here. And she is much calmer, much happier, as far as I can tell, cat. She let, likes to get scratches. I have to help her lose her winter coat when summer comes because she can't quite reach the middle of her back, but she's gotten used to me. So I appreciate everything you do to support the St. Augustine Wild Reserve so we can help cats like Natasha. Thank you. Hey, come here. Good girl, really. Hi, I'm Abby and I'm a volunteer here at the St. Augustine Wild Reserve. I'm in with four of our Greylos. This is Luna, Hunter, and also in here is China and Pandora. When, De when Luna was about a year old, Deb received three wolf puppies from an accidental breeding. She decided to put them in with Luna to test out her motherly instinct. As you can tell, she became a great surrogate mother. You can come in here, clean their enclosure, give them fresh hay, fresh water, feed them, and we also get greeted with lots of love, which sometimes can uh, leave you a bit muddy, but that's okay, because we love you guys. Hi, my name is Marty. I'm a volunteer at the St. Augustine Wild Reserve. This is our beautiful Barbary Coast lioness, Sarabi. The last of her kind was killed in the wild in the Atlas Mountains almost 100 years ago. She came to us at the age of 33 days, and she weighed nine pounds. And the reason that we got her, because a female lioness only has four mammary glands and sometimes has five cubs. She was the fifth cub, so we bottle fed her. Uh, she was nine pounds at birth, and now she is about 550 pounds. And she is one of the sweetest girls in the world. And she was walked until she got a little bit clumsy.
This beautiful cat is Kenya. Kenya is a melanistic Asian spotted leopard. She only has three legs because her owner let her off the leash one day when they were walking in the woods and Kenya stepped in a leg hole trap set for a wolf. She has recuperated very well. She's almost 21 years old. You're seeing the spots on her skin looking through her fur. She's a very athletic cat, very healthy for her age, and we're very happy to have her. Hi, I'm Lindsay, and I am here today with our African Crested Porcupine, Cali. Uh, African Crested Porcupines are the largest and heaviest of the porcupine family. Uh, she can have up to about 30,000 quills on her body at one time, and the quills actually range uh, from about one inch to 13 inches. They are made of keratin, the same thing as our hair and fingernails. So what porcupines do, they don't shoot their quills, as we may have heard as young children. Uh, what she would actually do if she felt threatened is she would stamp her feet, she would rattle those quills, and if that wasn't enough to scare off whatever was making her nervous, she would puff out those quills and ram into whatever she's trying to attack. There are no, there's no poison, there are no barbs in her quills. Um, most oftentimes animals, you know, have issues from infection because they're not able to actually pull the quills out because what you have to do, they're hollow on the inside, you actually have to break them off and then pull them out to release that kind of vacuum pressure. Uh, so Callie is about 14 years old. Their lifespan is usually 12 to 15. So she's pretty old, but she enjoys her life here. She was a breeder overstock. Uh, people often do own these as pets. Uh, they can be trainable and pretty sweet. And as long as they're comfortable with the person, they don't ever really pose a threat. Callie is actually an herbivore, so we feed her uh, fruits and vegetables. And she really likes root, like a yucca root. Uh, we give her typically harder vegetables like carrots, sweet potatoes, like I said, yucca, celery, things like that because she has rodent teeth that are very strong, very sharp, and foods like that actually assist in filing her teeth so that we don't actually have to go in and do it because we don't want to do that. Uh, so this is our very sweet girl, Callie. She also loves bananas and we give her a blueberry muffin, a tiny blueberry muffin every day. We don't want her to have too much sugar, but that is her favorite treat. So we appreciate those of you that donate those blueberry muffins to us. So thank you for joining us and Callie thanks you too. Hello everybody, my name is Sean um, from the St. Augustine Wild Reserve. Today I'm with our two Jaguar cubs. Uh, the spotted one here is Rio and the melanistic, which is a fancy word for black one, is Diego. The jaguar is similar to the leopard in spots. The jaguar has fewer but bigger rosettes, as you can kind of see in Rio here. The melanistic ones as well do have spots. They're just harder to see. You need the proper sunlight. Since receiving them in March, I've come in every single day to hand feed them and get them acclimated to their enclosure. For the most part, they're pretty laid back and like to sleep their day away like most house cats. Uh, on the other hand, they do get pretty rambunctious like brothers do and they tussle and have a fun time chasing each other around. Uh, at this point, they accept human touch most of the time and kind of seek it out. Um, as you can see, Rio's just pretty relaxed while I'm just giving him scratches and sometimes he'll groom me back by licking me and singing. Thank you for your support so we can take proper care of our animals like Rio and Diego here. This is Taj. He is a five-year-old male lion and he's quite a titan. He's uh, going in at 600 pounds plus and you can see how tall he is. I'm five foot four. He loves his ball bar. He's gotten it since the day we got him. Huh? You like that ball bar? Yes, you do, you big boy. Yes. We got him at 12 weeks. Um, you can see the docketing mane on the lion. That means his body is producing uh, the male hormone, testosterone, and the ladies like that. They want the biggest, strongest, most virile lions to father their cubs. So um, he would be quite a hit with the ladies, on um, Taj. So uh, Taj, again, he is just five years old, so he's not quite fully grown. They usually grow until they're about six, fully mature at six years of age. They live in a large group called a family, um, called a pride. But the males usually, I haven't got any more baby boy. The um, males usually visit just to uh, make baby lions or to participate in a hunt of a large animal. 
the lionesses do most of the hunting, but for big animals like water buffalo or giraffe or hippopotamus, um, they need the weight of the male. The only animal not on the lion's diet is the rhinoceros. They cannot penetrate that hide. But he, here he is, and a good look at the white under his eyes. That uh, reflects, that ref good boy. <laughs> that reflects uh, moonlight and starlight into his eyes so he can see better at night. That's when they do most of their hunting. And the beautiful black eyeliner acts like sunglasses on the, uh, in the glare of the Serengeti sun. Yes, that's an eye kiss, that slow blink. So, there's our movie star, Lion Taj. You gonna give us a little snow? He often gives me a snow when I run out of milk. Yeah, he's a good boy. So another type of thing we do here for our animals is enrichment. We give them various different devices to play with to stimulate their minds. Some of those things are balls, barrels, logs, ice cubes, feather boards, other boxes, and different scent enrichment. So things like bubble baths, or we can give them one of those other items like a ball or a box with a scent on it like perfume, or cinnamon, or oregano, or even deer urine. We also use pinatas on occasion. During the holidays, we can also give them scent enrichment, other types of enrichment, things like pumpkins and Christmas trees. Um, so it's just something that stimulates their mind, uh, keeps them active, keeps them thinking, um, you know, different uh, types of things uh, to keep them stimulated, basically. Um, so it's uh, something that's required by Fish and Wildlife, but it's also something that we really love doing here. Um, so we love giving them different types of enrichment to interact with in their habitats.
so we have here is a pinata. It's made entirely out of paper, um, so the tigers can pummel it to death and ingest it, and it doesn't hurt them at all. Um, but uh, we do have an additional treat for it, Seize, that's going to get this today. Um, we had some police officers bring by a fresh roadkill deer. Um, so this is actually the back strap out of that deer, the primo meat out of it. Um, we're going to stick it in this pinata for Seize. And then actually, we are going to cover um, this because Seize specifically is really into um, scent enrichment. So we're actually going to also put some deer urine on this pinata. Um, I know it sounds pretty gross, but it is uh, something really interesting for a tiger to smell. And then uh, hopefully he'll get those treats inside after he uh, beats it to death. So let's go see how that's going to work out. So it looks like he picked the one that's got the, uh, the deer meat in it. Um, he's trying to figure out how to get to it. And he's letting us know that he's not going to share. He's 10 years old um, in February, so he's actually 10 and a half now. Um, and uh, again, aside from uh, loving the scent enrichment, um, you see he just got out of his tub there. Um, tigers do love water. He is no different. Uh, so he, uh, you know, was just bathing in his tub, but uh, has some fun stuff in his habitat to play with. Um, we got Seize. Um, he was basically given to us from another facility to keep uh, another cub that we had company. Um, he had lost his sister due to a heart defect, uh, the cub that we had. Um, <laughs> there's lots of play in here. <laughs> there's more in this one. Um, so, uh, but yeah, he, um, the cub that we had lost his sister due to a heart defect. And uh, another facility asked us if we wanted a buddy for that tiger cub. And we said, absolutely. So Seize was given to us to keep that other cub company. Um, we're really glad we have him. Um, that other cub did uh, unfortunately pass away at the age of six. Um, from a spinal defect, um, unfortunately, from poor ble poor breeding, excuse me. Um, so, but uh, Seize here, we still have, very healthy guy, a um, lot of fun. He's actually probably the friendliest tiger on the reserve. He gets along with pretty much everybody. Um, so he's a really chuffy guy, really vocal, <laughs> um, really playful also. Um, so he's, uh, hi, who do you have? <laughs> He's, uh, he's an absolute joy uh, for us to have here at the reserve. So another thing that we do here at the reserve with our animals, another type of enrichment, is uh, training with them. And it's actually clicker training. And this is what a clicker looks like. And that's the noise that it makes. Um, basically, um, you'll see us doing some interactions with the animals with a clicker. Um, and basically, the clicker is what's called a bridge. Um, for a behavior. So it is us asking them to do something, and then if they do it correctly, this is telling them, good job, yes, that's what I wanted you to do, and then it, a, a reward would follow. In the case with these guys, a primary reinforcer is food. So basically the, the thing that they want the most is going to be some sort of food item. So whenever we're first training a behavior, we'll use the click and we'll reward it with a food item. Um, so uh, some of the various things that we use clicker training for is uh, just as an enrichment item to get them to, to think about something that we want them to do, ask them for a behavior. But the main reason we use clicker training is in order to uh, train our animals to do cooperative care with us. Good. So what we're doing with Aries here, our resident liger, is a little bit of what we call cooperative care. So what I'm asking him for is to see his paw so that in the event in the future, if he's ever limping for any reason, um, I can check his claws, make sure they're in good shape, check his paw pads, make sure they're still in good shape, no blisters or sores or anything. Um, so, um, so that we can do any kind of care with him from outside of the cage. Um, so any kind of veterinary care that we can do from the outside without having to knock him out. Can you give me the other one? The other one. The other one. Good boy. So he is trained to give both of those paws so that um, any, any kind of veterinary care that we have to give, we can do outside the cage without having to knock him out. 
So um, whenever you anesthetize an animal, um, it can be very dangerous. So can you lay down? So he's trained to lay down in various positions where we could give him injections. Um, we could check his paws, things like that, because um, doing any of this stuff from outside of the cage with his help um, is much safer than having to knock him out to do anything like that. Um, so, so he's a very cooperative boy. He does enjoy doing these sessions. It's also really good enrichment, mental stimulation for him. Um, but you know, it is also for his well-being. So if we can ask him for these behaviors, so basically have him help us with any uh, anything that uh, might ail him in the future um, is the idea behind that as well. Um, so he did actually already get a meal today. Um, so people will wonder um, oftentimes too if, uh, if they're deprived of food in order to get them to do tricks per se. Which again, these aren't tricks. This is just, um, you know, us asking him for some behaviors. He did already get his full meal today and this is just additional food actually. So this is a already completely fed uh, liger. Um, so he's just uh, very willing to please, likes to um, help us with his, uh, with his care if need be. Go lay down one more time. Good boy. And that is some of the cooperative care that we do here with the animals um, in order to better care for their needs. Good girl. On your mark. Can you lay down? Lay down on your mark. The last type of enrichment that we give to our animals here is basically leash walking. Um, so when we get them out on a leash, it gives them the opportunity to see and smell different things outside of their habitat that they wouldn't normally see. So that other type of enrichment and exercise is a really good thing for them to get. So animals that we are able to handle throughout their lives, we do like to be able to do that mostly for them. Obviously we enjoy going on the walks as well, but it's a great thing to stimulate their mind and to get them active to be able to come out on a leash walk. And it's a really great opportunity for us to do other training as well. Um, so it's uh, not just another way around here that we like to stimulate our animals. This is Spirit. Spirit is one of our many wolves that we have here at the reserve that loves coming out for a walk. Um, so wolves actually have perfect alignment um, between their shoulders and their hips. Um, so they're able to run at about 10 miles an hour or up to about 100 miles. And this is one of those girls that really loves to run. <laughs> one of the things that's a benefit to being able to get them out on a leash um, is we, uh, we get that uh, extra advantage of being able to take them um, for that run if they so want to go on one. So we're going to go right now on a light, brisk jog. There's a reward for our run. <laughs> we're going to take a nice drive in this one. As a brain, she's afraid of this cat. Oh, yeah, okay. Good 
some of the videos and photos of us handling the animals, walking them on the property, you'll see us, uh, you know, a lot of us holding these sticks. Um, we call them bite sticks. Um, they are used uh, a lot of times the, the animals uh, communicate a specific way. You know, they can't, you know, they can only communicate usually with their mouths. So they get a little mouthy sometimes. Um, and so we allow them to bite this, um, you know, so there you can see there are some uh, some bite marks on it um, as it is a bite stick. But honestly, the, the, the thing that we use these for the most is um, actually, you probably saw at the beginning of this video that there are a lot of uh, birds roaming the property, uh, which is a great form of enrichment for the animals. It's uh, we actually call it tiger TV out here. Um, so they wander around and, uh, you know, the animals are able to watch them, but it does create a unique challenge when it comes to leash walking these animals as, you know, there are chickens, there are turkeys, uh, ducks, um, you know, some resident animals that call the reserve home as well as, you know, with the pond here, there's some ibis, um, vultures come in, um, heron, things like that, um, that, you know, are, are on the property as we're handling the animals and walking them through. Um, so you'll see, you know, a lot of people like holding the sticks and what, what they're doing basically is they're going to shoo those animals um, out of the way um, as we have a hand, uh, a tiger that we're out handling, um, you know, walking, they'll kind of shoo them out of the way off the path so that we can walk by without an issue. And then you'll see them sometimes wave um, them uh, to sort of break the tiger's focus if they are focusing on one of those smaller animals. Um, then we can, uh, you know, change their focus, you know, bring it somewhere else.
this concludes our wildlife tour of the St. Augustine Wild Reserve. But last but not least, I wanted you to meet our Galapagos tortoise hatchling. Now this is Darwin. He is a Galapagos tortoise. And this is his little cage mate, Wallace. They were born about a year ago. Now Galapagos tortoises are the largest of the tortoise family. And as adults, they will weigh over 500 pounds and live over 100 years. They will be grown in about 10 years from now. So be sure to visit the reserve often so you can watch them as they grow. And there they go. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on our virtual tour of the St. Augustine Wild Reserve. Please visit our virtual silent auction, which will be open from October 24th through November 8th, closing at 10 p.m. We appreciate your support of the reserve and hope to see you out here at the reserve soon. Thank you.